so the next thing that we need to do is we need to think about the throttle and then we'll give it a quick test run before <coughs> start putting everything back inside so the um, two bars from the speed controller are going to need to go on to the motor wires here there's no reason for having thick wires going going to the motor um, and actually we might be struggling for room as well so the, these wires don't need to be particularly long and what I'm thinking is that I'm actually going to put the speed controller inside this area here which I seem to just about have enough room to do um, we're going to have to be careful with the with the with the overall height because you've got the box here which I'm going to want the um, battery box to go in over the top um, <clears throat> but we do seem to have just about enough overall room if these wires are all squashed down so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly pop this on here just so that we can see how much room we've actually got right so that goes like that So I might need to take some plastic out of the back here to allow wires to um, get out. And so and I've decided that the receiver will actually be able to go in the back of the truck in this area here because that when we when we first looked had plenty of space in it and if you just hold it in there you can see how that's going to easily go. Ideally I would have had it inside this box but I really think we're going to be out of room for doing that. You kind of can't necessarily plan too far in advance, but I'm pretty confident the speed controller is going to want to sit on top of the servo there. So I'm actually going to go ahead and put that in. So re remembering alcohol cleaning trick it really does make all the difference I I've, I've stuck these sorts of speed controllers in many models many times and if I haven't done this particular job in no time at all they start moving around and falling off another piece of tape The hardest part about any of these conversions is often getting the wiring sorted out and everything tied to the way so that it fits. Um, it's not always obvious what the hardest part is going to be. So put a piece of tape there and this video might seem a bit painfully slow but I think that if I if I miss out too many stages especially if you like the, the, the hard bits it can be very difficult for somebody who's following and trying to do the same thing to actually achieve the same results so I'm I'm trying not to hide anything as I as I go along so 
do bear with me and if you're if you're if you're confident of what you're doing <clears throat> you can kind of fast forward I guess so so that's that um, now I'm going to need to make sure that wires can get out of the back so I'm just going to go ahead and make some space for wires power cables will come out of the existing hole I'm just trying to lay all the wires down to get everything as flat as possible and to not have wires going on top of each other so they will go through there actually going to put the screws in <clears throat> because it's really important to make sure that everything fits and will go back what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop the motor wires Probably about there. That's it. Just chop these two wires off. What I'm what I'm hoping to be able to do is to put the body on and make sure that everything still fits before I go any further. So we'll pop it down there. I'll just push the the switch which we are going to remove. I'll just push this stuff out of the way for now. These wires I'm expecting will kind of go something 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 like this. So that's that. And I just want to quickly make sure that everything will actually fit in once the once the once the body goes on. So open up the bonnet so you can see what we're doing. So that will slide into there. That fits in perfectly. The battery should still fit with the even with these thicker wires. Will do. Shut up the bonnet. That will be fine. And then underneath, plenty of plenty of room for all those wires, and the receiver will will be able to go in that place behind. In fact, I've had a further thought about the receiver as well. So, right, having, having made sure that everything will fit, I'm quite pleased about that, <coughs> it's kind of soldering time. So, the first thing to do um, will be to actually put this wire here onto the, onto the end of the um, power input to the speed controller happy with those joints need to prop it up or something. That and 
just to make sure that my battery will fit nicely with it. So I'm imagining that the battery will go around like that and then when it's plugged in like so and then it should all neatly tuck away. So maybe the battery will need to go that way up. Let's just make sure the wires will all tuck away neatly. A bit folded over but that that ought to be fine. We ought to be able to, we, we ought to, be able to get the bonnet down easily. Just see how it's going to go. That's going to be absolutely fine. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to swap this switch for the switch down here. So remembering that it's the two on the right I'll just get a bit of solder onto the soldering arm to help me get them off so those two off I'm going to hold the wire Was it with a surgical thing? Actually, I might just put some solder onto this onto the switch terminals themselves. Being careful not to melt it. One. Two. And that's pretty secure. Get the wires folded away a bit. So they're nicely out of the way. And again, I'm going to test it. that's in the on position off brilliant so let's just get these on wires on the right way around that right it seems to be working okay the problem that we have is that the motor is not sufficiently suppressed okay so um, you um, use these little um, I think it's one microfarad um, capacitors and there is already one which is going between the two terminals what you need in addition to that is you need from each terminal to the to the to the base of the thing itself it's not terribly difficult to do <clears throat> so I'm just going to pop down the shed in a second I'll turn this off I'm going to pop down to the shed in a second and I'm going to bring some of these capacitors up. Um, I'll try and put something in the description so that folks following this can do similar if they if they have a need to. So that that that, that comes off easily enough. And so what I'm probably going to do, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to replace the capacitor going across here altogether 
and I'm going to put the three on so and I'm going to put three on so that I know that they're all identical to each other. Before I turn the soldering arm off, I'm just going to remove these wires. Oh, that might be my problem. No, no, it couldn't have been. Seeing how that comes out quite easily. Okay. Right, having f returned from the shed, um, I managed to find some of these capacitors. They had the number 104 written on them, which interestingly is exactly the same as what's written on the motor in the in the first place. So <clears throat> I'm going to be wanting to put one between each of the contacts on the motor and then one between each of those contacts and the side. So the solder on these things tends to stick a lot better if you clean it up first. So I'm just using a file here. Just to get it a little bit shiny. That's that. <clears throat> right, so hopefully the soldering arm is hot enough again now. And what I'll do is I'll start by putting a blob of solder on each side. You've got to be kind of careful that you're not melting things, but at the same time, it needs to get sufficiently hot just to get a blob on there. Really, the higher the wattage soldering arm for this kind of thing, the better. This one here is 40 watts, so it's a kind of a medium power sort of soldering arm. You wouldn't want to be using um, one of those tiny gas ones. I've got to get the case hot enough some solder to actually stick but without melting all the plastic around it. So we seem to be getting some solder on there. That's staying there and then another blob on the other side. Staying there too. The next part is to pop on the capacitors. So we're going to we're going to want to put one between the two contacts, which is kind of what the motor had there in the first place, and then and I'll just pull that out of the way. I'm going to want one each side between the casing and the contact. So I'm just going to start. with attaching one to the casing let's see that's pretty well attached Just pop that there I kind of want everything to sort of sit neatly after us as well so I think I'm going to have that there. And we know that the black wire is going to go here too, so I might as well do it 
do it all pretty well at the same time on this side. So that's that side of things done. And then on the other side, clean off the soldering on. in place nicely and then because we're going to be attaching the red one as well Got the solder in there Let it cool down. Good. A quick test. Let's see if we've still got the interference on the steering servo. Turn it on. considerably better so I think that we probably cut out that RF interference let's just check and I think we're okay brilliant Right, just snip all the excess bits of wire that I don't need in there. Seems to be about it. And then give the truck a quick testing on the floor. Let's see. Excellent. Well, 
we're, we're getting there, <clears throat> not too much to go. Right, having tested everything, we're on to the final straight now, so get the get the heat shrink onto onto the motor wires. Let's do that without snapping anything. Now the important part, tucking all of the wires away in sensible places so that things don't get pulled or damaged or foul or anything. So starting with these two. Now <clears throat> now I know that the receiver is going to be able to sit about there okay so when the body goes on top it will sit in there nicely so <clears throat> I'm plugging the soldering on so what I'm going to do is I'm going to neaten all the wires up and kind of get everything in about the right place using using tie wraps so if I put one around there it's going to want to go back there so I'm just going to pull that tight there <clears throat> and then and then this bunch of wires here, which I don't want fouling on the drive shaft. I'm just going to put a second one around. And that, <clears throat> and that you see just kind of keeps the wires in a reasonably neat arrangement. And I should be able to get the receiver to sit up under, underneath the cab. I'll just tuck these wires back in. I really don't want anything getting strained. The aerial can kind of go wherever it goes. Just chop off the excess. There. Right. <clears throat> a little bit of a moment of truth. So. And just do everything very slowly here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just gently easing the receiver up into that cavity where I know it will fit. It's sitting in there if you can see it. Just push him up there. So that's now sitting in there nicely. The aerial. Just make sure that that's not hitting on it or pinched by anything, which it isn't. And um, <clears throat> everything is just sitting nicely. And there's a nice gap between the drive shaft there and all of these wires. Get my screws. It's actually easier putting this front cab on, I think, before I do the do the rear one. Yep, we can see the holes okay. The screw doesn't need to be terribly tight. <clears throat> I 
Got a screw there. <clears throat> Then there, is, there are these two screws here. Again, not the dicks too tight. And we should be in business. Let's just get the battery which has been charging and it looks as if it has charged. So the battery goes in. Plugs in. These wires here just to do with the lights and <clears throat> and I'll probably come back and address the lights in a later video. And we're shut. Turn on the transmitter. Turn on the truck. And we seem to be working. I think I ought to just take it outside very briefly and just do a quick run to make sure that it's working properly.